So as I was saying before, sorry this into three parts, but uh, my, my camera just can't take the long video, so sorry about that. But as I was saying before, these references are going to be all contextual for you. So they're going to be based on the text of Scripture that you're dealing with. And uh, one more I wanted to look at here, dealing with works of righteousness and salvation by grace through faith alone, is uh, right here in 2 Timothy 1.9. So let's turn there because that's another reference that it gives us. So there's 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1.9. It says here, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So these references are going to be super helpful in dealing with the text at hand. Also, uh, if we go here, flip back to Matthew, we'll get to the New Testament title page. I'll show you that. So there's the end of Malachi. Let me see if I can get that. So as you can see, this is very clean and clear too as well, just as the Old Testament title page. Then you get to Matthew, you can see there's no self-pronunciation. We'll get to that at the end there. Uh, but you can see just very clean, very well done. Also, it is not a red letter. TBS does not do red letter at all in any of their Bibles. And that is because they believe that all Scripture is equally inspired. So they don't want to set an emphasis on one portion of Scripture over the other. And that's their belief. And I respect that. I, I see where they're coming from on that. But as you can see where we're flipping through here, there is no red letter. Which personally I prefer because um, just having an all uniform text for me is a little bit better for reading and all that stuff. Although I know red letter does set off the words of Jesus. Kind of gives you an idea of where you're at. But I uh, just want you to be aware of that. This is not a red letter edition. But uh, speaking of red letter, or something red, we do have four ribbon markers in this Bible. Okay, so there's four. And the, here it looks like two, and this is my one complaint of the whole Bible. One complaint. So you can see there's four there, two red in the New Testament, and then two black in the Old Testament. They are glued on top of each other, which is the one complaint I have about this Bible. They should be spaced out a little bit more. That way uh, they don't tear the pages as easy or the ribbons don't get messed up or the ribbons don't mess up the pages as you're flipping them. And that's my one complaint of the whole Bible. But really other than that, it's not that, not that big of a deal. Not going to stop me from buying one. So let's go to the back matter here. See what we have. So here's Revelation. And then show you also the alternate... Uh, so here as you see the one, that's the alternate Greek translation there. So you have out of the book of life. Here it has the King James translators being in the margin or from the tree of life. And then let me see if I can't find an asterisk real quick for you to show you the updated words. Here we go. So here's one that says Alleluia. And Alleluia means praise the Lord. Okay, so that's going to be something helpful as you're reading to understand that in English. So you see Alleluia and you're like, okay, what does that mean? Come to the side here, it says praise the Lord. So that makes a lot of sense. That's going to help you in studying Scripture. And I do find a lot of those asterisks actually really helpful. Here in the back in Appendix 1, we're going to get a table of weights and measurements used in the Holy Scriptures. So you're going to start with Old Testaments. And for us American people, you're going to want to use the imperial measure. Okay, So Americans, we use the imperial standard, which is the British system of measurements. So that's inches, feet, yards all that stuff, and then ounces, pounds, and that, all that. Whereas people in England now, ironically, use the metric system. So if you're a metric system, or if you use that, you're going to want to look at this column here. If you're an American, you're probably going to want to look at this column here, where it says imperial measure. And then you're going to have your biblical references to this. So this is, um, I believe, Old Testament weights. Okay, so weighing stuff. Then you're going to have Old Testament lengths. Again, for Americans, we would want to look in this column. For anyone who uses the metric system, you would want to look in this column. Then you have here liquid measures, Old Testament dry measures, and then you have money, which thankfully it's, it's U.S., and then here it's pounds. So if you're in England, you're going to want to look here. United States, again, there, just to get a good look at that. And there's the different watches that people would do. Uh, for like militaries or watching over a city or something like that. And you're getting into New Testament measures and weights, lengths, liquid measures, dry measures, New Testament money, all of this stuff. It has a lot of helpful 
things in the back. And the reason why it doesn't have self-pronunciation is because as we see here in Appendix 2, it's actually going to have a list of all the proper names of their pronunciations. And so here's the pronunciation guide. And so this is very helpful to use. So you can see here the A with the little V on top of it is going to be pronounced as in the words abet, hat, and dilemma. Okay, so that A is a uh sound when you have the little V on top. If you have a straight line over the A, you can see that there. That's going to be like pronouncing A as in the first letter of the alphabet. So how we would say A, B, C, it's going to be a sharper A sound. So it's going to be tay, tay, tame, tame instead of instead of a bet. It's not going to be tame, tame. It's not going to be that. It's tame. So it's a sharper A uh, sound, more like A instead of ah or eh. And so here we can see the ones with the dots is going to be as in ah arm or father so it's a softer a sound it's it's more of a ah which is not a sharper a sound okay so then we can see down here it's the same thing for all the vowels and then they even have consonants together so you can see the ch here with the line under it that means it's going to be pronounced as a k sound like a k so as in character so we want to pronounce that like a k instead of a, a ch and so down here if we were to pronounce some of these we see we have the A with the V over top, so that's going to be more like a bet, hat, and dilemma. So it's going to be a uh sound. And then you have that sharp CH, which is going to be more of a K sound. And then an O with a, uh, with a V on top, which is going to be as a nor. Nor, okay? So then we would have akbor. Akbor is how you would say that. And then here is a sharper A sound, followed by a CH that's going to be more like a K. So you would have a kim a kim or a kish a kish so that's kind of how you use that pronunciation guide it's very helpful especially if you want to pronounce words that's a big thing to you so they do have a lot as you can see there and then again the third appendix you have a daily reading plan and i love that they put scriptures back here telling you how important it is to read the bible so it says these bereans were more noble than those in thessalonica and that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. And it gives a reference. And then again, it gives 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And that's what I was talking about, this Bible being a solo scripture Bible. This Bible, TBS wants you to read the Bible. It wants you to get immersed in the scriptures. It wants you to become a student and a lover of the Word of God. Everything screams it, from the helps of the King James in the front to the back measurements to help you understand those, from the asterisks to updating words, the references, the Bible reading plan. They just want you to get immersed in the Bible. And this is this Bible, this Westminster, is going to help you. So this reading plan is called the McCheyenne Plan, which is going to take you through the Bible, um, excuse me, it's going to take you through the Bible in two years. And in that two years, you're going to go through the Old Testament once, the New Testament twice, and Psalm and Proverbs twice. Okay, so you have your first year here laid out January through December. And then you have your second year, again, starting in January and ending in December. And this is why they give you four ribbon markers, man. Read the Word of God. If you have one of these Bibles, I would highly recommend reading this plan. I'm almost done reading the Bible through, so I'm going to finish my plan, and then I'm going to go straight to this plan for reading the Bible. After that, you're going to have seven blank pages of Bible paper. Okay, seven blank pages of Bible paper, so that's 14 pages back and front. So I did count those out earlier because I figured that was going to be a little tough to do with one hand. But you have seven pages back and front. Okay, so that's a lot of writing paper, especially with how big these sheets are. You can get a lot of information on this paper. So you have 14 pages to write. Then you're going to have maps. This is printed on a cardstock paper instead of Bible paper. And then to mention, these note pages are also like the Bible paper that has the text on it. It's more of the thinner paper. This is, however, the maps is a thicker cardstock paper. And then you're going to get into their maps, which I personally am falling in love with these. They don't have a map index, but as you can see, they have kind of the guide around it so you can find things. But it's printed very clearly, especially since this is a larger Bible. You can have a bigger font. You can see all of these are easy to read. So then you have here the Red Sea crossing. And look at this, guys. They have a Red Sea crossing. I can't believe it, right? I mean, I've seen Bibles. I'm not even joking. Where the, where the, I don't know how they justify it. There is an alternative route going up through the Mediterranean Sea and over. And I'm just sitting there like, are you kidding me? Are we even reading the Bible? But here they have 
a Red Sea crossing. Now again, we might not know exactly where they cross, but I appreciate that at least they're going to try to follow what the scriptures say and have a Red Sea crossing. So that for me is a big plus. Here is the division of the tw uh, 12 tribes of Israel. As you can see there. Then here you're going to have the United Kingdom. And uh, these are actually little cool things here. This tells you where Israel got some of their supplies and their trading things. So that, that's actually really cool. That's going to show you the Saul's kingdom, David's kingdom, and then Solomon's kingdom. And the extent of those. Here you're going to have the divided kingdoms. And then you're going to have when Judah goes into exile to Babylonia. And when Israel went into exile into Assyria. So those are also very, very helpful. Here's a map of the Persian Empire. And then here is the Holy Land in the time of Christ. So it gives you the divisions that the Roman Empire had it under. And then finally we're going to have Paul's missionary journeys. Which I think is one of the coolest maps because of the little storm. Eurachlodon. A storm that uh, got Paul's ship into the water. And they were at in the sea there for a couple days. But it's got all of his travels and everything. And it's very well mapped out. And then you're going to have at the back... Um, actually no cardstock pages you're just going to have the end, ending vinyl page then you have the back matter there so uh, some cool stuff some cool stuff in there this is a definitely I highly recommend this Bible now as far as reading carrying and preaching uh, I would give it these rankings for reading I give it an A++ I mean nowhere are you going to beat this font and even though there's all of this going on uh, you just take my word for it. This is not going to distract you from the reading experience. I've been reading through this Bible and the words are just so clear and so crisp. The font is modern, which I like. Don't be, if I could say something to publishers, don't be afraid to print the King James in a modern font. I get that there's a characteristic of the King James of an older translation. And so the older fonts are like, you know, you feel like you're reading the King James. But TBS does such a great job of bringing the King James into the 21st century with this beautiful font that they produce. It's very clean, crisp, and sharp, yet it does feel like it's a King James font. Like, I'm reading this, and I'm like, I'm not thinking this is the NIV. I'm not thinking this is the new King James. I'm like, this is KJV all the way, yet it's a clear and modern font. So I can't thank TBS enough for doing that. Also, in any lighting, any lighting, there is no... Um, shining or no sh um, no light on the page so you can see here there's no sheen where you would normally see that light that kind of shoots up the page this has no um, shining at all no matter where you pit it no matter what lighting it's under you can't see it it's going to be clear there's going to be no light that distracts you from actually seeing the letters so I really like that plus the fact it's line matched every line is matched as you can see here which is going to make it an even more easier reading experience for you. Now, carry. I'm going to give it a C. Obviously, it's a large print. It's a big Bible, but I think I'm grading it high. I would even probably give it a C plus because really, in all, all actuality, this Bible is big, but it's light. I, and I don't, I, it's kind of weird to, that, that dynamic because it is a bigger Bible, but the materials it's made out of, it's quality, yet this feels good in the hand. Like, I'm not like, oh my gosh, I'm lugging around a suitcase. This is actually very nice. I've carried this to church a couple times and I've read it. And again, I showed you in the other part that you can hold it in one hand because of the vinyl paste down liner. So for carry, I give it a C to C plus. It's not as heavy or as bulky as you think. It's actually very nice profile, very easy to hold in the hand. For preaching, I'm gonna give this an A++ and then another plus. Uh, because from the pulpit, it is so easy to see the font. That 11.8 font is so clean and crisp that you can't miss the text you're preaching from. It's just, it, it can't happen. Unless you're blind, you're not going to miss that text. The references are super helpful in studying, as I showed you guys. I, I did some studying in John for Sunday school. The references were super helpful, helped me understand the passage a lot more. The back matters and aid in study, especially if you need to know some weights and measurements and things like that. And then also just the reading plan, which for preachers, it's nice for me. I would like to have one Bible. Uh, so reading plan, having that all together, one Bible is really a pretty good thing. And then the chapter summaries, they're actually helpful. It's not just like a one liner like we talked about, like God's righteousness or Abraham's journey. No, there's going to be actually a full summary of the chapter and the contents in it, which is going to give you a big heads up when you're going to start to study a passage if you're a preacher. 
And if you're an expository preacher, which means you're going book through book, which means like we're starting, you know, we're going to start in Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to preach through the whole book of the Bible. We're not doing topical. We're not skipping across the Bible. We're going to go passage through passage, verse by verse. You can't get a better reference Bible than this. You cannot get a better reference Bible. I, I, I expositorily preach, so I preach straight through. Uh, books. So if I were to preach to Ecclesiastes, I would do chapter 1. I would study the natural breakdown of the text. So maybe I would go from 1 to 12, maybe, or maybe there. Um, and I would expose this text, get the meaning of what Solomon was talking about, and apply it to today. And we would go through this book chapter by chapter, verse by verse, to see what the Scriptures say and to see what the Scriptures would say for our lives today. And so, if you're an expository preacher, and that's how you preach, is book by book, chapter by chapter, this is your reference Bible, hands down. And if this is too big for you, they come in the standard size and even in the compact. Although for preaching, I think the large print or the standard size would probably be your go-to on that. Uh, so, honestly, who's this Bible for, though? I, honest to goodness, it, it is geared probably towards preachers, to be honest with you. But anyone who wants a large print reference Bible... You cannot, and I will repeat this, cannot go wrong with a TBS Westminster. Just from the quality of the materials, the paper, the print, the uh, print quality, the size of the print, it's just absolutely beautiful from beginning to finish. And uh, guys, I'm telling you, we need to support TBS. They're a, they are literally a ministry. You can get if, if Cambridge were to sell this Bible, this would probably be $185 from Cambridge. Now, I know evangelicalbible.com might would have it for a discount or something like that. But if you were to buy a Bible like this straight from Cambridge, this is probably a $185 to $200 Bible. You can get this from TBS, I believe, for about $90. I think maybe even $82. And then if you go to evangelicalbible.com, they're actually selling it for $79. So actually, it might be $89 from TBS's website. So it's under a $100 Bible for all those references, all those helps, the clear font, Large print, I mean, you can't beat that. And the standard size is even cheaper, and it still has a good font. So if you have good eyes, the standard size would be perfect because that font's pretty big too. But TBS really does this for loving God's Word. Their mission is to get it out to people so they can have the Word of God in their own language. And the fact that they do this for English speakers, for the King James, um, I can't appreciate their ministry enough. Can't thank you enough for their, for their help. Uh, and, and again, thank you, Miss Darcy, for just all that you did and just communicating with me about this. And uh, guys, I really do have a passion for just supporting TBS. They are a great society, uh, and I, I read their quarterly when that comes out. I love reading all the projects they've got going on, and then even some of the sermons about the Word of God they have in there. And then they have very, uh, various helps, too. If you're a King James person, they have different little tiny pamphlets that aren't too long that uh, explain like why different verses should be in the Bible or you know, why we should use the King James. And they're not super long. They're just short. And you're, they're also available on digital platform. So you can download them from their website for free onto your phone or your tablet or computer. So that's my full review. Sorry it took three separate parts, but my phone was really not, uh, not having it today. <laughs> so I hope this review was helpful for you. Hope you consider buying one and supporting TBS. But I hope you guys have a great day and God bless. Comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.